Um, today, we celebrate that, that candle of joy. And this time of waiting and preparation has been a joy. Do you know there was a lot of joy on my face when I saw this date on the calendar and I thought, we're going to do something special. We're going to try to have a combined service for our Advent season. Do you know why? Because we're better together, but we also have our individual expressions, right? And we didn't want to do it for Christmas Eve because too many people are gone. And we didn't want to do it this next week coming up because the week coming before us might act as some of our Christmas Eve service in a way because some of us travel. So this is the one on the calendar. So with great joy, we began to gather with the, the choir and the praise team and some of our special musics and, and our administrative assistant and, and Diane. We put all these things together. And you know, as the weeks went on, we had to convince ourselves of the joy because sometimes scheduling came up and practices had to happen and extra work had to be put through. And wouldn't you agree that sometimes when things are coming together, you know it's gonna be a great thing when it finally happens. But leading up to it, sometimes we got to remind ourselves that we're gathering for the sake of joy when the things of life come up. So I wanted to share with you a few brief words. And before anybody panics or wonders if the, the sausage will get cold before it gets done, I don't have a lot today because some of it was, was doubling up on what the, um, the men's group said for the Advent candle. But I want to have this reading from Matthew 11, uh, verses 1 through 6. And this leads us in that moment and sort of uh, goes again with the message from the Advent candle of joy. Now when Jesus finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Messiah Jesus, he sent word by his disciples and asked him, John said to Jesus, are you the one who has come or shall we be keeping watch for another? And Jesus answered to them, Go and tell John what you have heard and what you have seen. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf now hear, and the dead are raised up and back to life, and the poor have good news that are preached to them. Finally, in verse 6, Jesus said, And blessed is the one who is not offended or shamed by me. Dick read his behalf of the Advent candle for us today. That why do we celebrate and share these things with one another? Why do we journey through this place? What is our response as disciples of Christ in this season, especially this week? For the joy of it. For the joy of proclaiming that good news. See, we are post-resurrection people, friends. We are Easter people. We are resurrection folks. So sometimes we can celebrate the work of the cross and the raising of Jesus on the third day, His resurrection. And we forget that there was a time in history when the world was crying out to be saved. We are a saved people. And John was the forerunner. Right? He was the one that was the herald that was proclaiming the arrival of Christ. He baptized Jesus. But in a moment, when he was there in the prison cell, he was wondering, is this really the one? I need to be sure because John was counting his final days, this side of heaven of his life, on one hand. Things were getting desperate. And he was searching for joy. Am I sure? That Jesus is the one. And Jesus said, I need you to tell John. So whenever his last breath is, he knows for sure that he walks through this and the agony and the thoughts and the despair that will sometimes creep in our lives. And he wants John to be sure and full of joy that I am he. That you have heralded and proclaimed the good news of the resurrection, the coming of Christ. That those that are blind will see. Lives will be changed. People that are broken will be restored and repaired. We will be given new life and new vitality. The truth came as a baby. And he died as a sacrificial lamb. Friends, he was resurrected as the Messiah of all human kind of creation. In the season of Advent, we celebrate his arrival the first time. And we wait for his arrival a second time. When Jesus will come in full majesty. As a conquering lion to defeat all of sin. To defeat all of darkness. And to arrive with all the majesty of heaven. And call his bride, the church, home. Can we wait together in those days? Looking for Christ.
Christ in our world. We need the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. And even when we question, remember that Jesus reached out to the prisoner, reached out in the darkness, reached out in the quiet and said, I am He. You are blessed if you are not ashamed by Me. Rest in Me. I am the one who restores broken things, broken people. And because of Me, I will breathe an everlasting life and grace into your life too. Friends, we come together to celebrate the joy of it. Plain and simply because Jesus came, Jesus conquered, and Jesus will come again. So we gather together in joy for that moment and that moment alone. But it is a journey. Each of us walk this way. I want you to, to not, I don't want you to look around, but imagine yourself that there are spaces next to us. There are spaces outside of us. There are plenty of homes in this community who don't know the saving grace that Jesus covers us with and the new life and the despair that He can reach down with, with nail-scarred hands and pull us out of the stuff that we find ourselves in and pull us up to Him renewed and reborn and in inheritors of life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father except through me. Friends, we are the bearers of this good news. We are the bearers of all joy. But it's a gift meant to be given away. No bow or box can contain it. No FedEx person could drop it. No Amazon shipment can delay it. Jesus arrived as a gift of love to save us. Jesus will come again to save us and to call us home. Would you tell the world? Whether it's a voice or it's how Sarah shared with us, maybe it's the way our hands and feet move in this world. But would you share that we are blessed people and that we are blessed even more when we share the good news of the baby Jesus that arrived to love us to teach us, to show us the way on this journey.